Hello, everyone. Just a quick word from your friendly editor slash husband. For all of you who listen to So I'm Watching This Show and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android devices. I use the app and love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure you set so I'm watching the show as a favorite so you don't miss any new episodes. Again, the app is Podcast Republic, available on your Android device. Thanks! I'm so nervous. I don't know why. We've done this like four times already. That's why I was like, okay, you need to. It's Cinderella. Yeah, but we've already done two Cinderella's. But it's Cinderella. Like on camera, Cinderella? Well. Well, and also, I loved this movie. I know, me too. It's great. <laughs> I love it. I love the old one. Oh, I love it because it's beautiful. So it's, it's actually like. It is beautiful, but it's not or like. Or <laughs> is it beautiful? Because I. It's not like beautiful. <laughs> it's like ABC miniseries. Its beautiful. age was showing. It in was, this one. Yeah. It's, this is the first mm-hmm. time that I was a little bit like. Mm. Yeah. You don't realize how sophisticated film has gotten until you go back sometimes. Yeah. Like I was like, mm, man. Yeah. Things are cinematic these yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was even we had the bars on the side mm-hmm. while we were watching it. Hello, everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. We don't know where to look yet. <laughs> this and, is, okay. We're still trying to I'm going to try one more time because this is still video. audio. This yeah. is still audio. So we need to make sure that's going to be, I'm telling you, the audio is going to go right out the door. <laughs> Okay, hello everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching This Show, your twice-weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about movies, TV, music, and more. And as always, this is a spoiler show, so you have been warned. Spoilers for Cinderella, y'all. 1997's Cinderella. (laughs) That was less enthusiastic. Yeah, you were like, like, oh, 1997. No, so we've been, it's the brandy Cinderella, which is kind of like infamous for our generation and we've been waiting for like a a good reason to do it and there's not really a reason now other than we need a quick episode (laughs) well it it just felt it felt good it felt right yeah plus uh there's been some like scuttle going like i've seen a lot of people talking about it recently i think because it's not on disney plus it's not available like it's aggressively not available. We had to watch a DVD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which you can still order DVDs of it. Yeah. But like it it is a DVD. And there should really be a Blu-ray. Or just a streaming. Like or, it, yeah, something. Yeah. But it like it the age was showing the most, I think, because I don't think it's been like remastered. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause even even if it were a even like a DVD, like yeah. a remastered DVD would be better than mm-hmm. what we watched. <laughs> there was a lot of questionable stuff but um yeah and and furthermore brandy just released another album and it has been a hot minute since she's done music and so i was seeing a lot of that in the zeitgeist and i i guess i'm a low-key brandy fan i've got like three of the i still to this day and i cannot tell you why i cannot but to this day i have full moon like the album in the the left car door of my car oh wow i don't know why (laughs) Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, I like The Boy Is Mine. <laughs> like, I'm like, and I used to watch Moesha, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not like, it seems you're a larger Brandy fan. No, but it, was, it, it wasn't everything, because I think I only had, I had three albums. Um, I didn't even know she had three albums. Oh, yeah, because I had um, Aphrodisiac. <laughs> Is that one of them? Yeah. Uh, it had kind of a fun, I like her voice. It's, it's very sweet. But it's, it's like but a little can, bit raspy. She can get there, yeah. It, it was just always really unique to me. And so she had a song on Aphrodisiac that I always love because it samples clocks. Mm. And it's called Should I Go? Or like, I think it's called Should I Go? And the song is or Should, should I, I Go stay? or Should I Stay? <laughs> and it's about leaving the record industry, like the oh, music industry, because okay. she's like, I don't like this anymore. It's not yeah. fun. And it just always, and she does that like, that like harmony acapella thing with herself mm. where the entire outro... Ooh. Yeah. Very sirens. It is. Ooh. <laughs> All right. 
Brandy. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm into Brandy. <laughs> you like music so much more than you think, but I think it's because you you don't like. I feel like it's like an entirely different world for you. Well, I that you just <laughs> I love music. I'm just not like you're insane about music in a way that you would I'm, say I'm insane. I well, I'm passionate about but it, but I'm I I like music, but I'm not like you're constantly searching for something new mm. and i'm like i'm gonna go listen to matchbox 20 <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so anyways yeah this movie do you remember when this came out yeah we were like 12 ish yeah, yeah we were still we were in mad was, woman oh it those were was, dark times it was huge it was huge i remember we were talking about it for like days and days and days and it was really because we I'm, were the perfect age like 12 years old well i might have still been 11 mm-hmm. and i was like not into boys okay yet so i everybody was like "Ooh, the prince Ooh, the prince and didn't i was do much for you i was like i mean he's i can i could like logically understand that he was a handsome person but it was like nothing for me I was very much into boys at this point. I mean, (laughs) I know that. But now, today, I'm like, ooh. (laughs) Paolo Montalban. Paolo Montalban. Because we also, like, kind of, it's not not exactly his introduction, but because he's in the market scene. at one point, he does just a shirt open. shirt open, just ripped to shreds. To shreds, you say. So, anyways, we'll get to him. It was huge. And it was such a, like, a cultural touchstone for our generation Mm -hmm. that I remember the, like, day before, I want to say it was, like, Christmas, like, winter break or whatever. It was one of those half days. They just played it on the TVs. Like, we didn't even have school. I do remember that. They did the same thing with Merlin. They did it with a couple of, like, the big thing. Do you remember when TV had, like, big... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Look... this year hopefully we're going to go see the movie dune <laughs> and you will all be treated to a 45 minute discussion by me of when sci-fi used to do miniseries <laughs> and they did dune and you're gonna Children be in a dune. plastic like. <laughs> i will i will get like a hazmat suit to go to the movies mm-hmm. to see dune but i miss the miniseries because they did sci-fi especially did them all the time. Well, they, they would rebroadcast so them. And they would, every April was miniseries month. That's how, that was like the first thing Yeti and I had in common. No, I that know. We loved miniseries yeah. month on sci fi. <laughs> I loved them in theory, but I remember usually being bored by them by like the second episode. <laughs> but Re our uh, St. Patrick's Day episode <laughs> this year, <laughs> The Magical Legend of the Leprechaun. Yeah, so the it's like claim to fame is that it was blind casting. Like and across the board. Even yeah. the down to the dancers. Yeah. yeah. And that was huge at the time. And that was always apparently the the point. Because it started in the early nineties with Whitney as Cinderella and it just never quite was picking up steam. Oh, they were they were had been planning to do it mm-hmm. for longer. And mm-hmm. oh god, could you imagine Whitney as Cinderella in the early nineties? Well, no, because Whitney Houston is a weird blind spot for me. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, obviously this. Yeah. And I mean, I am aware of her talent. We should watch The Bodyguard. I've never seen I me know neither. nothing about it. I, I thought it, it was medieval because no. in the oh, poster. Oh, she's got that outfit. She's in like chain mail. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. always <laughs> thought it was like a knight and a princess. And like. No, he's like her actual. Yeah. She's like a pop star and he's her bodyguard. <laughs> No, she's a weird, and I think it, and it, it pains me to admit this now because in in the moment, it was what it was. But it's like my understanding of Whitney Houston was Deborah Wilson's impression of her on Mad TV, which oh, was yeah. unflattering. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was an excellent work on Deborah's part comedically, sure. but well, she had she was troubled. Yeah, I guess I'll say. And then in a way, we're more sensitive to that. Now, now than yeah. we were in 1999. Well, and it also was like so salacious and mm-hmm. everything with Bobby Brown was like in the media and everything. And it was just like, it made me feel gross. Usually. So she, yeah, she's just weird. Like, I mean, I know I want to dance with somebody. Mm-hmm. And weirdly, she actually had kind of like a comeback album after this in like 2000, maybe. Because I have this I have this distinct memory of our friend group. We had such a weird. You and me? Well, just like kind the, of the, that lunch yeah. group. Th- that lunch group. It was like eclectic like mm-hmm. we had like a smart girl like we had the smart girls the pretty girls the like we had a goth girl you know what i mean like it just Who was, was our all- goth girl Jen mclaughlin oh yeah okay yeah, yeah. 
and and then and eat one by one because I was like the first boy to join because I was the gay in need of like a surrogate family. Mm. And one by one, each girl brought like a boy in. Yeah. And we actually had like I a didn't. pretty you're, no. the, you're the boy I brought. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had like a pretty great little little, you know, friendship group. And that was like eighth grade where yeah. it really like boomed. But I just remember going on like a camping trip with the girls and they were listening to that Whitney Houston album. And mm-hmm. I can remember even Jen with like her like pitch eyeliner yeah. and slick back hair being like, it's not right, <gasps> but it's okay. That song's so good. <laughs> so good and so i know it's a thing but it just like i said it was just a weird blind spot for me yeah. but well also um, not to not to get away from it but obviously we love dolly parton but whitney houston's version of i will always love you is well, they're incomparable iconic they're incomparable yeah. um whitney or dolly herself is like every morning when i wake up i hear the cash register t- yeah, ping and i think i think her, whitney yeah. houston <laughs> <laughs> so Round about the time that it actually really got going, it was, you know, the ni- 97. And by that point, Winnie Houston, although it hurt, they had this beautiful, wonderful little behind the scenes featurette. Oh, did they? Like yeah. 15 minutes, yeah. which you should be so lucky in this day and age. There's never anything. Anymore. And Whitney's talking about how she's too old to be Cinderella at the ripe age of 33. <laughs> she was 33 in this movie. <laughs> She's younger than we are now no. in this movie <laughs> by like two full years. And so she called it Brandy to do it. And yeah. it was like there was no other yeah. like choice in her mind. Like they didn't even audition because apparently and I guess all of the executives were really on board. But there was one executive who was like, we can't have a black fairy godmother and a black Cinderella. That Why would be on crazy. Earth not? He was so insistent that they needed Jewel. Which, I mean, there's a version of this. <laughs> Jewel, I, I agree. There's a version of this, but none of that movie is on this yeah, no. <laughs> movie. Those are two separate establishments. Jewel does not belong anywhere near this movie. And so finally... Like, they... Jewel is akin to, like, Kylie Minogue's Green Fairy. <laughs> like, those are correlating. But yeah, so... That didn't last long and they they got it going and they were very adamant that they wanted the entire the entire cast to be blind, not just like one thing. I'm sorry, I have to go back to the jewel thing because there's also especially now in the year 2020, it it like that comes off so gross, like a white woman needs to come save Brandy. No, Jewel as Cinderella. Ew, that's worse. Okay, you thought no. <laughs> that's so much worse than I was imagining. No. Jewel is Cinderella not. because Whitney no. Houston's the fairy godmother. Wasn't how old was Jewel when she popped on the scene? I don't know, twenty. Oh, okay. She wasn't thirty-three. Well, <laughs> yeah, still, no. <laughs> so that's why I compared her to Kylie yeah. Minogue. I thought it was. Like I didn't a, know where you were going. I was like, <laughs> all right, that's yeah, no, absolutely not. Well, and they they like wanted it to be a spectacle it had 12 million dollar budget at the time which was large for a tv movie yeah in that's 97 serious and so they wanted stars and so they got jason alexander they had to rewrite it like three times because they rewrote it for him but then he didn't they like rewrote it for george costanza <laughs> i mean then, i know that's his most famous part mm-hmm. and he hasn't really ever gotten anything that's lived up to that again but i think jason alexander is pretty good at acting yeah and apparently they had a really hard time with the uh, stepmother because they were having a hard time finding an actress who didn't have issue with the optics of a white woman with Being like mean. a little black maid. Yeah. And apparently Bernadette Peters, it didn't even dawn on her. <laughs> <laughs> she like jumped at the chance, <laughs> which does bring us to. <laughs> I love Bernadette Peters. <laughs> so we watched this last night and OK. I, I loved this so much. Everything about this just resonated with me. And I remember for like a long period, because obviously I had the Blu-ray. And so for a long period in like 2000 to 2004, Jack and I watched it all, all the time. The time yeah. I would go over after school and we would just like watch it and like sing and <laughs> act along and stuff. We loved it so much. That sounds right. I actually meant to start earlier in history with the whole th- this production. It's Rodgers and Hammerstein and Cinderella. And it, it started in, I want to say, 57 with Julie Andrews. And then, oh. have you not seen? It's just no. It's just but okay. her voice, though. Yeah. Is she Cinderella? Yeah. Oh. And then ten years later, they redid it with Leslie Ann Warren. Yeah, and I've seen that one. Yeah, that one's it, it, it's like I, it's like fairy tale theater adjacent, kind of. Yeah. Um, at the time, 
that one was huge. It was immensely popular and they reran it all the time. And so I had a version of it taped on VHS off of TV and I watched it a bunch as a kid and it doesn't hold up particularly well. I mean, it's it's nice to watch if you have an affinity for the story, the people or the musical, but it's very straightforward. It's also it's, like drab. Yeah, it's not like super pretty. It's not this. This one is colorful. Although the fairy godmother in that one is gorgeous. Is she? Yes. I don't remember her specifically. It's, um, I think she might be somebody. Hold on. Uh, Celeste Holm. She's mm. she is someone, but it sounds familiar, but I can't place it. Yeah, she was. She's just in pink mm. and it's like dripping, just like glittery, very Bob Mackie. Ooh. And that's I'm a fan of a glamorous fairy godmother yeah. by fairy deal. Uh, Amazon dot com. This is what it looks oh, wait. like. Did we cut the fairy godmother from fairy Dale? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's still a really good She's book. alluded to. She's glamorous, <laughs> if you want to know. <laughs> she's a little, a little BTS for yeah. the book. Mine, she's very tall. She's like nine feet tall. Mm. Yeah, no, she's definitely cut. Yeah. <laughs> still, this is what it looks like. Buy it. But yeah, so this was like the third mm-hmm. kind of cultural version of that. And yeah, so anyways, I wanted to get into it. What What do you think about this movie i love it yeah yeah it's really cute i all the acting is like fine (laughs) if we want to get into the bernadette peters the discussion we were having yesterday this is not a nuanced performance okay no i said something we happened to watch the 2015 cinderella before this yes because that's one of our favorites yeah and when this one was on bernadette peters was doing patented bernadette peters of course and her little voice I, that I can't mimic, but she's like, it's like so little. <laughs> and she did something and I was just, I, I very boldly was like, well, we can all agree that Bernadette Peters is the best stepmother. And you were like, yeah, she's good. <laughs> she is good. Uh, Kate Blanchett is obviously the more gifted performance. Well, you okay, see, here you go again. You were like, <laughs> Kate Blanchett is a more nuanced performer. And I was like, Whoa! And I was like, are you telling me that you don't think Bernadette Peters is nuanced? And like in that moment, she kind of screamed something. <laughs> and I was kind of like, okay, well. Wait, what's her name? <laughs> Marishka. Marishka! <laughs> she is a theater performer. Yeah, yes, but I think that's the, we've talked about this before. And this is a theater production. <laughs> this is a theater production. I'm not saying she's bad or this is wrong. I think that... You, everyone could agree that Kate Blanchett delivers a more subtle and nuanced performance <laughs> than Bernadette Peters in Rodgers and Hammerstein's theater production of Cinderella. I don't think that's up for debate. Okay, anyways. Because she did have a scene at the end where you were like, okay, that was... <laughs> when she's like going back up the stairs or something, and she just sort of... It's like a couple little looks that she gives Cinderella, and I was like, okay, there's some nuance. It's Okay, so now we're I'm getting... I'm not saying she's bad. So now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. That... When I said she's the best, I mean the dynamic of them is my favorite in this movie, mm. where... The the thing that I've always we talked about if you if you listen to us before you know how we feel about Cinderella but the thing that I always find so fascinating about Cinderella is what a not self fulfilling prophecy but it's that thing that I say about how people will sink their own ships yeah the stepmother if she put the effort into Cinderella at so many points yeah up to and including eleventh hour a hundred percent if she were like okay, yes, I'll help you, Mm -hmm. then it would have turned out okay for her. But at every single turn in the story, she's just a dick to Cinderella. And it's like, well, I'm not going to help you now. It's a cut off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. By fairy tale on (laughs) Amazon.com. Because that's the kind of like character Cinderella is, Mm -hmm. is is like the 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 kind, gracious, forgiving, benevolent. And so there's the scene after they've all been to the ball and all three of them and then all four of them are singing a lovely night Mm -hmm. and you can actually see that this is the first time in a long long while that these four people have actually been to like in in the same emotional space and it's almost they almost are like in cahoots a lovely night a lovely night a finer night you know you'll never see Charming as a prince will ever be. 
the stars in a hazy heaven tremble above you while he's whispering, darling, I love you. You say goodbye, away you fly. But on your lips, you and because Cinderella is telling the story, because she's she's explaining the lovely yeah. night and the how lovely and. Yeah. And they're just like, it is. And it's almost like you were there. And they're they're just having such a wonderful... Because everyone in Cinderella is stupid and they don't know she's been there. <laughs> well, it's it also in the fairy tale is like a masquerade. It's a masquerade. I know, I know. But because at least in the 2015, the godmother does like a spell. So yeah, that so she's she won't unrecognizable. be recognized. Yeah. But no, I also actually like that, too, because it, it kind of shows how little they actually think of her. Yeah. That by just giving her hair and makeup, they suddenly cannot recognize her. By fairy tale. <laughs> All of these things factor into fairy tale. <laughs> but, um, no, and so, and then there's the, there's the moment where I was like, if when the stepmother realizes that she's the girl, the yeah. mystery girl, if she was able to overcome her own horridness, mm-hmm. you know, she could manipulate Cinderella into being like, yeah. you know what? I've been too hard on you. Like, well, because blah, blah, blah. I think that goes for the 2015 one also, because we just watched it yesterday, because there's a point where she like I, the stepmother finds the slipper and everything. And she's like, here's what's going to happen. You know, you're going to we'll, we'll call him to you. You'll say, yes, I'll be the head of the household. I'll manage him and we'll marry the girls off to like someone respectable. Mm-hmm. And she's like, um, a hundred percent. No. And if only she had been like, will you please help me if I help you accomplish this? Or even she would have done it. Or even just like, oh, we'll come down and give it a try and just yeah. manipulate her way in. But yeah. she like James Bond explains her plan. Exactly. And <laughs> But so I just I think the moment I think the 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 sneer on Bernadette Peters' mm-hmm. face is so yeah. good. And I when think she Bernadette like Peters is great. I love Bernadette Peters. And when Peters. she like tells like breaks Brandy Cinderella down because yeah. Brandy in this role, it's a nothing like acting wise, it's yeah. really a nothing role. Uh she's fine. I think she's serviceable. I mean, for the most part, Cinderella is the Luke Skywalker. Yes, but I was gonna say this Cinderella and it's the, it's the place where I think Brandy actually comes out. She does have she, a little moxie. She has a bit of a backbone. She does. And I think it's interesting yeah. that, it, 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 yeah, I, I think it's interesting um, because Lily James is so, and, and it, it, each production, I mean, it deserves its own. A, a separate thing. I mean, yeah. I think Lily James has a little bit of a backbone too, but she is just like nothing but goodness and light. And, it's just very and tomorrow's Brandy's, another day. Yeah, and Brandy's like, she's got some, I said Moxie. Mm-hmm. I'm sticking with Moxie. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it's interesting. I love the design mm-hmm. of this movie. And it does age a little bit. It, it It is a design that was the height of, like, fashion and art in 1997. <laughs> some of the textiles in this were yeah. okay. so when I was in like late middle school and high school, I used to make dolls. Like I just for fun, I would make like art dolls. At, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see her. I made that one in high school, but I just remember going to Joanne Fabrics and Michaels and stuff and like buying these things. And when I'm watching this movie, it gives me like You're like, that's that tacky fabric I yes. bought back in 1998. And that's the thing where when you commented on Brandy's dress being you were like, I forget how pretty it is. I do like it. I yeah, do think it's, it's pretty. Because really I made a I made like a comment and you were like, Oh, do you not like it? And I was like, No, I do, but there's like a netting, well, like a, 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 yeah, a synthetic you know I, netting over the front that you, I'm just like, there were so many prom dresses. You know what it, it's kind of like is the outfit that you hate the most in Showgirls where she's well, it's better than that one. Well, it is, but the fabric is, <laughs> yeah. is similar because I agree with you that the outfit is terrible, but it's the best that Elizabeth mm-hmm. uh, looks in the whole movie, mm-hmm. like the silhouette and everything. But that's the fabric it reminded me of. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I, I do like it. And it is very similar to the, the, the animated, which is really the only place that this actually bears any resemblance to the animated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because this is produced by Disney. Really? Yeah. I mean, it aired on ABC. Come on, Disney Plus. I put it on Disney Plus. <laughs> they like took in particular two artists as like inspiration for this and Cinderella and her the stepmothers in their house and everything is Klimt. Ooh, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah it is. And then the prince and his whole thing is Maxfield Parrish. 
Okay. And so it's just very the yeah. the, the patterns and the like I, stuff. I was like looking at it again as a full adult because you insisted we watched this like three years ago and I don't remember. But I was like, why is there so much stuff on the walls of the house? <laughs> like, oh my god, it looked honestly. You said Klimt, but it looked like um, oh god, I've forgotten his name, Gaudi mm-hmm. from Spain. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. I thought it looked like. Mm-hmm. I was going to come back around to the prince, Paulo Montalban. He came from, like, nowhere. He was in the chorus of A King and I on Broadway. He was the last mm-hmm. person they auditioned. And they auditioned a bunch of people that we, like, know, like Tay Diggs and Mark Antony and, like, a bunch of people. Um, God, Tay Diggs. <laughs> just, I'm just imagining Tay Diggs now. Well, that was another thing, that they weren't, they weren't sure if they wanted a black prince or a white prince or, gotcha. like, what... And so I like that they went Asian. Well, when he came in and he yeah. was a, which also just by the way, he he doesn't really work like anymore th- movie like stuff a ton, but he has not aged a friggin day. Holy shit. <laughs> <sighs> That's a man right there. He does still do work because actually I saw him in Cinderella. When they revived it in the 2000s. On Broadway? Yeah. I nice. didn't. Not, not on Broadway. It went on tour. But Okay, cool though. Um, but he did The Prince with Jamie Lynn Singler. Or Descala, one of them. Yeah, Jamie, Singler. Jamie Lynn Descala is her married name, but I think she got divorced. Uh, yeah. So, so I think it's Jamie Lynn Singler. Jamie Lynn. She was Cinderella. Well, you can. Jamie Lynn is like a. Pretty. That could be a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Eartha Kitt was the fairy godmother. So I got to see Eartha oh. Kitt. Where is she? <laughs> Isma, she's up there. Isma, Isma. <laughs> uh, and it was her like big trick was that she did a front walkover. <gasps> I and, love Eartha Kitt. Yeah, it was, Ugh. and the mice were puppets. It That's was like fun. really fun. I had a, I had like a stuffed one of them for a while. It was actually a very great performance. Yeah. I love Roger Hammerstein's no, Cinderella. It's, it's very. The good. music is so good. It's I, I get good. lost in, lost in the whimsy. He's but, been singing. Are you beautiful? Because I love you for like <laughs> well now I'm at twelve the hours. Sweetest sound, mm. which that's not actually in. They added it for this movie. That's it's fine. it's. I guess the Rodgers and Hammerstein estate. <laughs> they're they're workable but difficult. Oh, so they were like they could use Rodgers and Hammerstein music. Other... They're the ones that did the sound of music, mm-hmm. but that's because we were talking about it, and it was like Ariana Grande doesn't get money for Seven Rings. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And so then I was like, "Well, does Gwen Stefani get money for Wind that?" When I don't it know, up? and we were but, like, "I don't know." Because uh, also, it's like they the the estate allows Family Guy to use their music, but they're not allowed to alter it or make a joke about it. Yeah. So they family guy reached a point where Stewie singing I Have Confidence was funny enough in its own right. <laughs> it is. And, and I so think that just, Seth MacFarlane likes broad like theater oh, yeah, he's a theater he's per- just yeah. like, all right. And as I've said before to mention Kylie Minogue for the second time in this Cinderella episode, uh, she can perform the sound of music in right. concert. Because of um, Moulin Rouge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They like gave her that. But yeah, so they wanted to alter some things for this and they could so long as um it was other Rodgers and Hammerstein music, oh. but they had to approve it. Okay. And so the sweetest sound, they wanted a meet cute and yeah. like an I want song. And so they I put that. Great. In. I'm also not the type of person like I don't get butt hurt when they when like stuff is added to musicals. Well, it gives the, it gives each it gives each production an identity. Yeah. And I also like I mean, I don't know. I just think that there, a lot of times that. The new songs are just as good. Mm-hmm. So. Well, they added. Uh, I liked Evermore. <laughs> <laughs> they added "Falling in Love with Love" for because mm, the Bernadette. stepmother doesn't have a song. That's then why would you cast Bernadette? Yeah. I fell in love with love one night when the moon was full. I was unwise with eyes unable to see. I fell in. And uh, that's from the boys from Syracuse. And they actually mm-hmm. had to fight for that one because it changes the context of the song when it's in Cinderella. Oh. And then they actually, although one of the producers admitted well after the fact that they changed lyrics from the stepsister's lament and didn't clear it. They just did. Oh. Because they refer to her neck being like white, like a swan. 
a long as a yeah. swan is what it is. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. But they say something about white and now I'm just like imagining like what if they had tried to keep it and just like painted Brandy's neck like like egg white. It's so stupid, but it's the first image that popped in my head and it sounds horrible. Let's steer away from that in- <laughs> impulse. <laughs> I, I was just imagining a hilarious visual. And then the the there's music in you they add for Whitney, which that's mm. the one that I really don't. I mean, Whitney Houston needs a solo, but yeah. Well, I, I was gonna say she sings "Impossible," but she sings it with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Okay. I was like, we have not talked about Victor Garber <laughs> and his pink suit, <laughs> and we need to talk about the pink suit. Well, the Whitney uh, or Whoopi Goldberg was involved early on. They 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 went to her. I I think they went to her for the stepmother mm. back when. Well, uh, Whitney Houston was going to be Cinderella. Sure. And she had to pass, but she was like, keep me in mind as this goes. Yeah. And it was it was one of those productions that they threw together really quickly, oh, okay. which I think kind of works in it their does, favor frequently. It, it does sort of feel like they just like shot it in a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they were just like, let's go. Well, it, it was even though it is filmed and, and was aired as a movie, it was it was treated as a pro- live performance. They could yeah. do it from beginning to end in two hours. Oh, wow. Um, I guess there was costume and makeup stuff. But sure. yeah, it, it could be done. Uh, and um, we did, and it was filmed on two sound stages, one of which is The Good Place. Yeah. We were watching it. And I was like, I rewound it. And I was like, is that The Good Place? And you were like, oh, I don't know. And we Maybe. called Will out. Yeah. And I was like, is that The Good Place? And he kind of like, sn- like sneered at first. And then the shot came up and he was like, Oh yeah, and then they were like walking. I was like, "That's Chidi's apartment. <laughs> like that's the stairs to Chidi's apartment." And it was like, "That's the yogurt shop. Like there needs to be a fountain right there." And then yeah, you're golden. I found out that it it is the Universal Studios European Village back lot. <laughs> That checks. Yeah. So um, and then the other one, because they also compared it to Wizard of Oz because the sets were so big because that that, mm. that castle set was like there's a second story. Oh, because the camera goes up and over out into the garden yeah. and stuff. So, I mean, it was it was massive, even though it does look a little bit quaint by today's standards. Whoopi suggested Victor Garber because he was like transitioning from theater into film and television at this point. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah, because uh, that was alias didn't start very long mm-hmm. after this interesting so she recommended him and, and then the, and titanic yeah yeah and then 97 yeah and then at the last minute they needed a queen so they they brought in Whoopi, and apparently her and victor were like good friends although apparently Whoopi was outright offended by the costume jewelry because it wasn't real she just th- thought it was tacky and beneath oh. her so she called up harry winston so is everything Whoopi's wearing in this real? Oh my god! <laughs> and Brandy's necklace that you commented on. And oh, it's stuff. real. Yeah. Oh, nice. I thought that necklace was very beautiful. It was very, mm-hmm. it was like dainty and mm-hmm. cute. I liked it a lot. So she like <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Shit like that happens too sometimes. Who knew Whoopi was such a? I think it was Harry Winston. It was well, a, it was a, a jeweler. Yeah, but who knew Whoopi was like so? <laughs> like who knew she cared about? Yeah, such a glamazon. Jewelry. Yeah, I like. I mean, she's. She dresses pretty masculinely a lot of the mm-hmm. time. That's hilarious. Well, to she's me. playing the queen. No, I know. I, I think I love it. I think it's great. It, it just is. It's like shocking. From I would have expected that from Whitney Houston, <laughs> not Whoopi Goldberg. So. I just yeah, I think it's funny. It's just so joyous to me, and and I love the like the actual just the production of it all. Like there mm. was a point where, well, for starters, the prince is, is giving a ball, which is a hilarious song. <laughs> Cause there's a point in <laughs> the movie where Whoopi calls the prince, Chris. And I was yeah. like, Chris, <laughs> and I was like, they do establish that his name is Christopher, Christopher Rupert. Rupert. <laughs> he has like, um, a, like 14 names. Mm-hmm. Windermere, Vladimir, Constantine, Herman, I, I, uh, Francois Reginald Herman. I knew him at one point. Yeah, it's too many names for me to remember. <laughs> what, what's the Maisie? Maisie. 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 Because <laughs> <laughs> in the Leslie Ann Warren version, it's more like they can't hear and he's just repeating it. Mm. And I love in this one, it's a very incredulous. Bernadette Peters is like, Maisie. Yeah. <laughs> That like whole thing is this huge production number, and it's like choreographed to the hilt by master choreographer Rob Marshall. 
I mean what I said. No, I know. I, and I agree with you. The problem is that I... We I don't was, like Rob Marshall as a director. No. But we like him as a choreographer. But he directed Chicago, no? Yeah. Okay. So we like he's, Chicago. He's capable. Exception to the pros rule. So he should just be choreographing the movies he's directing because he keeps insisting on doing musicals and then not doing them right. Mm -hmm. And it's driving me bonkers. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's just it, it's just this entire production number that I like. I remember watching the 2017 Beauty and the Beast and I was like, somebody high kick like something. <laughs> like, can we get a can can in here? Like and then for well, no, because she's not wearing the proper undergarments. <laughs> Emma Watson. Love her to pieces. You will be the pick, death of me. Pick your battles, girlfriend. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the uh, ten minutes ago. That's a good you. one. Yeah, and the the waltzing and so because I actually remember for some reason my mom like had bones to pick up this production because she hated the camera that it just keeps spinning and spinning oh. and spinning and spinning. No, I liked the and waltz. You do, you do spin away just for it to spin it's back, back in. And like, <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. I liked that there's a little bit of a flare. Um, oh God, what was it? This guy directed something else from Justin to Kelly. <laughs> and she's all that. And this uh, Save the Last Dance TV movie. She's all that. There's the big dance number in that, too. Remember? Uh Oh, yes. I do remember. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> because there's that line about how it's like, we've been rehearsing since blah, blah. I'm like, just let him dance. Yeah, just dance. Just, it's just dance. Usher's in that movie. Just let it happen. I've like, actually only seen she She's All That like once or twice. You should watch it. I remember not really liking it. It might have been one that was like a hair more advanced for me uh, than I was yeah. like prepared for. Well, because this is off topic, but the girlfriend, she goes to the MTV Beach House and she like falls in love with Matthew Lillard. <laughs> it's really funny. After them singing 10 minutes ago, there's just this like additional four minute waltz. Yeah, just of all like a room beautiful full of train dancers waltzing in, da, 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 a, to pick a bone with your mom in beautiful purple dresses. Da, 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 da. It makes me want to learn how to do the Viennese waltz. Oh my God. And, and it's just, oh, I want to watch it right now. I want to stop and, yeah. and watch it right now. I love it so much. And, and I do love that like Brandy and Paulo really lean in like literally and metaphorically like lean mm -hmm. into it like the the old hollywood of it because mm. when they're singing do i love you yeah and they're like their hands are like pressed up against each other and their cheeks are yeah. like pressed up against it's each a very other. gene kelly yeah it's fred it, astaire ginger rogers kind of thing i mean it, it, it's wild how this movie it can be so you know traditional so classic but yet also so hip yeah. so modern mm -hmm. and it like yeah i don't know i i love it. it it's things like this that make me want kids it's like because so i you don't can show them i want to yeah. give things like this to to children let's just we'll kidnap noah for the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> force him strap him down watching cinderella watch cinderella he, but he has to watch four different versions <laughs> of cinderella <laughs> what's the fourth one well the leslie and warren and then the animated okay. and then the, yeah <laughs> okay all right all right I was like, but, you can't, you can't, Noah's too young still to watch Into the Woods. He can't do that, Cinderella. <laughs> ever after. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, ever after. Uh, you know what I was thinking yesterday when we were talking about it? I think the ever after dress is my favorite Cinderella dress. It's all white and sparkly. Yeah. Oh, I like it. It's, I mean, it's like, it looks heavy. Well. Like, it looks like, a, like, curtains or, like, a tapestry. No, it's, like, gauzy. Like, the fabric over the tapestry. I don't think it looks like that at all. I mean, elements of it do. Maybe it's been a minute. I don't <laughs> well, know. I remember like two she's, years. Got the, she's got the wings. Yeah, and I, like I like the wings. her hair and everything. I don't know. I dig it. I think and it's my the, favorite. And then not at all anachronistic face jewels and glitter. Fine. <laughs> cool effects, eye makeup. <laughs> Look, Leonardo, Di or Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo Da Vinci knew what he was doing. He found some mica deposits and smeared them on her face. <laughs> Weird. Weird. <laughs> There's not cheese on her face. Smear. <laughs> so, yeah, this was a weird episode. I don't know. <laughs> just play, just play all of the songs back to back to back. Yeah, it's a, we won't definitely won't get flagged by Rogers and Hammerstein for this video. There was a Twitter thread that I read about this like a year or two ago, and I could not refind it. But someone had done like an oral history, and Ooh, they were this. like, yeah, they were like breaking down thing after thing after thing, and it was like <clears throat> there was a point. It, it it has to do with like the higher ups with 
you know, it's like on one hand, they gave us this thing. It's like this is their why it exists in the first place. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they also kind of fought it every step of the way. Mm -hmm. That's so frustrating. It's like they never released the soundtrack, which it's like how you have Whitney Houston, Brandy and Bernadette Peters. Peters on. Yeah. And they never released a soundtrack. It's not like streaming. It's not. And it, it just there was a point where they actually even considered they were like, well, wait a minute, this is good. What if we did a theatrical release for this? And they like I think they screened it and everything. Hmm. And it just it, it was a weird production. And so I was trying to find that to like go into some of that. But yeah. I never did. But if anybody finds that Twitter thread, <laughs> send it our way. So, yeah, but I, I love um, the stepsisters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How could you tell? <laughs> well, they're the only ones we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> Vian Cox and Natalie DeSell were Calliope and Minerva. <laughs> those, and are, those are good names, too. Th- yeah, yeah. They were talking about their, like, comedic chemistry with mm-hmm. each other and all of the, like, and, and not quite ad-libbing, but, like, all of the little things that, the, that those women did on set. Yeah. Together, the two of them and Bernadette, like, in particular, the walking over to the door with the one shoe. How oh, they keep bobbing yeah. up and down <laughs> where they're like... <laughs> I love it. If it comes out, hopefully, you know, it'll be streaming one day. Yeah. Like I said, it is available on Amazon.com. But you have to buy the DVD mm-hmm. and then we had to find our DVD player. <laughs> we did <laughs> plug it in. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, I love it. I think it's sweet and I like the music a lot, too. And I I also as and a, also just so solid. It's, it's really solid. A, like because I, I do remember when it came out. I remember there being some chatter amongst the kids where some people would be like, how did a black woman and a white man have an Asian prince? And just like it just never dawned on me. Just also find your business. <laughs> well, I just like I I mean, I was raised in theater and that's yeah. far more common in yeah. live theater. Mm hmm. And also because they talked about designing the sets and everything and the costumes and they were like, when everything is so loud, Mm -hmm. you almost don't It doesn't even register. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing that registered the hardest to me is that Vianne Cox, because it's the 90s, she looks as old as Bernadette Peters. And I was like, that's the thing that's breaking it for me. That's, That's what it is. Um, it really, yeah, in the 90s, it's like she could be 24, she could be 42. Yeah. Uh, we have no way no, of knowing. No clue. No clue. <laughs> the haircuts weren't helping. No, you not know? at all. <laughs> but, that, like, high-necked <laughs> dresses and stuff. It's, like, very, like, how old are you, 100? But no, I just loved it, because we're going to go through a similar thing when The Little Mermaid eventually comes out. Mm. And I've already, I one of my favorite tactics to do with, and I don't engage with trolls often. What? I know what you're going to say. Well, you told me already. Okay. Yeah. Is to just explain it to them earnestly. Yeah. And so I've done it a few times on Instagram where people are like, this doesn't make any sense. If you're going to have a black girl as Ariel, then Triton needs to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. How can Javier Bardem, which brilliant casting for King Triton. <sighs> And I was like, can't wait oh. for his hair. I was like, they'll explain that he's her father. And so that's how you'll know. <laughs> the, and I was like, it'll it, be in the dialogue. Yeah. I was like, you'll be able to understand. <laughs> I was like, trust me. <laughs> and I was like, because I, I can't wait until I can't wait for the shitstorm when they cast her sisters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be it's going to be pandemonium. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> I also can't wait now. No, it's just, yeah, you just explain it to people like they're stupid. And then mm-hmm. they get mad. I'm like, what do you think I'm stupid? I'm like, I answered your question. You um, said the first thing. <laughs> I was just being nice. <laughs> no, she's, she's, he's the king and she's his daughter. That's how you That's know. That's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, like we said, this is hard to find, but if you want to and you are dedicated, you can get it. Uh, we definitely recommend Cinderella. Find it if you can. The 2015 Lily James one is streaming on Disney Plus. I think you said they just added it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So, um, and the Leslie Ann Warren one is readily available. Is uh, it? You might have to purchase it, but it was like on Vudu when I was looking for this one Sweet. and stuff. So, okay. So, if you can't you find a the, history lesson, if you can't find the Brandy one, you can watch that one and get the same music. It's also uh, different. It a lot of the same music, similar. Most of the same music. Th- that one I appreciated seeing when I was growing up because it has a visual identity of its own. It's very medieval. Mm. Her dress is very medieval. She has the fur. The white fur with the black diamonds. Oh, yeah. And the stepsisters have, like, the cone hats with the veils and stuff. And Yeah, I'm remembering that now. Yeah, so it's kind of... It, it's it's 
it's a thing. It's interesting. Yeah. So we'll check it out. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter. That's why I'm watching Instagram. That's why I'm watching this show. You can also subscribe somewhere in this region if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, then you can just, like I said, subscribe on YouTube or on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And this will be audio and video starting October 2nd. And that's it for us. Will's dancing a lot. (laughs) We're going to go out with the waltz. Yay!